the universe smiles on me and I am in a position to buy new books. Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah and I love to talk about books. Um, I'm filming this a day later than I usually would because um, yesterday, instead of filming, I had a catastrophic migraine um, and I'm still feeling a bit... Does anyone else who gets migraines feel like this? You kind of have like a migraine hangover the next day. So that's me at the moment. I'm wondering about the wisdom of sitting in front of a ring light when I'm feeling like this. So we'll see how I get on. Um, but yeah, because I filmed... I didn't film yesterday, I'm having to just quickly do this before I start work for the day. So let's get cracking. Today I'm going to bring you a book haul, which I don't do very often, but I've bought so many books since the end of lockdown that I'm actually having to split this into two parts. So today is all about the brand spanking new books that I've bought. Um, I don't tend to buy myself new books very often, I'm pretty much always skint um, and I buy my books secondhand most of the time. I do feel a little bit of guilt around that because obviously I want to support authors, I want to support bookshops and publishers, but you know, I've kind of got to support my mortgage more. Um, but sometimes <laughs> the universe smiles on me and I am in a position to buy new books. So this first bunch of books I bought with birthday money. Now I'm usually um, quite bad with birthday money in that it goes into my bank account and then it just gets absorbed into daily life stuff like bills. But this birthday I made a conscious effort to spend that money as it was intended and bought myself books with it. Um, so these first ones were all bought online because we were still in lockdown. They were all bought from Amazon, please don't shoot me. And the first ones are all books that I mentioned in my video about 10 authors that I need to read more of. I decided to start buying the books that I had earmarked in that video. So, if I can get them off of Betsy. This is them, and because I've already talked about them in uh, another video, which I will link in the description below, I'm not going to labour these too much, but I got Great House by Nicole Krauss because I absolutely loved um, The History of Love by her. Then I've got Diane Setterfield, Thelman and Black because I think she is a phenomenal writer. I love The Thirteenth Tale, and then I read Once Upon a River as well and was blown away by that, so I'm assuming this is gonna be absolutely awesome. Then I got Night Waking by Sarah Moss, because I read Summer Water earlier in the year and thought it was just amazing, and this one sounds like it's gonna really speak to me. It's about um, a mother, well it's not just about, but it features a mother who has children similar ages to mine who is kind of struggling with her identity. So that'll be good. And then I got Melmoth by Sarah Perry because I absolutely loved the Essex Serpent. So as for all of these, I have no idea when I'm going to get to them because my TV off the rest of the year is chock block. But these will definitely be high on my list for next year if I don't get to them before that. And when I was buying these, I also added a couple of other books that had been on my radar. Um, so the first of those was Maggie and Me by Damien Barr. This is Damien's memoir of growing up with a quite a fractured childhood in small town Scotland during the Thatcher years and it's about how um, Thatcher politics influenced his life and it's also about him coming to terms with sexuality and growing up as a gay boy in Scotland during the 80s and probably 90s as well. I have never read any of Damien's writing before but I am a huge fan of him. I have seen him doing lots of kind of bookish presenting and I think it's impossible to see him in action and not totally fall in love with him. So I am really, really interested in um, seeing how he comes across on the page because he comes across brilliantly in person. And speaking of presenting, um, I've seen him host a chat with 
this next author, Maggie O'Farrell, this is also a memoir, this is I Am, I Am, I Am, and it's about her 17, yeah, 17 brushes with death. I've got um, another two Maggie O'Farrell books on my shelves, but I haven't got around to reading them yet, and I heard a lot about this memoir, and then obviously there's been a lot of buzz around Hamlet as well, and I thought, you know, I really need to get off my butt and read some Maggie O'Farrell. I don't know if a memoir is always the best place to start with a writer, but um, this one sounds fascinating. It's shaped around 17 near-death experiences she's had throughout her life, and it was actually written for her daughter, who I understand has some sort of condition that leaves her quite vulnerable, and it just it sounds like a really captivating premise, so I'm really looking forward to getting to this. Also, for my birthday, I got a Waterstones voucher from my brother. Um, I know there are mixed feelings about Waterstones because it is kind of like the beast that's eating itself. Um, but I have a very soft spot for Waterstones. I worked there when I was at university and I just, I absolutely love their shops. Sorry, coffee, it is early. And this, when I went to use my voucher, uh, this is my first kind of trip out as lockdown was easing. I went to the small branch on Byers Road in Glasgow. And actually, that trip, I had plans to go to two used bookshops that um, are in the same area, Voltaire and Rousseau, which is just an absolutely chaotic, magical space of books, and also a new one to me um, called, I think it's called Caledonia Books. But I made the trek all the way up to Glasgow and neither of them were open. So I was so glad that I had my Waterstones voucher with me. And because I hadn't spent any other money on books in those other two shops, I decided to let myself spend a bit more. So I ended up with six books and I only spent a tenner. So that to me is pretty good. Um, so first I kind of wandered around and picked up some books that caught my eye. So the first one I picked up was Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. I mean, do I even need to talk about this one? I think everyone on booktube has either read it or talked about it, so I won't go into it too much but I am glad that it's getting so much um, attention after the fiasco that was the Booker Prize. I mean obviously I've not read it yet so I'm not really in a position to judge it but I do think it seems like a worthy winner going on all the love that's making the rounds for it and I have read The Testaments by Margaret Atwood and, and this is coming from an Atwood fan that book did not deserve to win a literary prize. I enjoyed it but it was not prize winner level and so I'm really looking forward to getting to this one. Sorry guys I just uh, managed to knock my camera over so I might not be in the same position that I was a second ago so where was I? Yes. So the next book I picked up in my stroll through Waterstones was Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by um, Rennie Edo Lodge. Obviously with the events of this summer highlighting the ongoing struggles um, with racism not only in America but across the world. I'm really um, keen to educate myself and get lots of different perspectives on this topic um, and this one is talked about all over booktube. Um, I think it's probably one of the best known books that people are reading at the moment on this topic and I'm particularly interested in reading this one because it is um, written from a British perspective and I'm so sick of the narrative that I keep hearing that racism doesn't exist in Britain because it's absolute bullshit. Um, so this book looks at um, kind of white dominance in the discussion of racism, the whitewashing of feminism, class, the erasure of, erasure of black history. Um, and I'm just really, really desperate to get to this book. And then I also picked up Sarah Main's The House Between Tides because I read a net galley of her book The Women of the Dunes last year and really enjoyed it. This was her debut and I think the books have got quite similar subject matter in that they're both set in Scotland and they both um, kind of centre around the discovery of a murdered woman. In Women in the Dunes, the main character is an archaeologist and she's looking into the history of some remains that were found in the dunes. 
This book is about a woman who returns to her ancestral home in the Hebrides and as she's renovating the house she finds the remains of a woman and it's about her looking, you know, trying to find out who this woman was and in the process of that lots of community secrets and I think family secrets are revealed. So I think they are quite similar but I really liked um, The Women in the Dunes so I'm hoping that this one is going to be just as good. Then I went on to look through my Goodreads TBR and see what books on the shelves in Waterstones there were that were on my TBR. There weren't many actually because um, it was quite a small store um, but I did manage to find another three. Um, the first of which was um, Freshwater by Akwemi Amazi. Yeah, um, I've had this on my TBR for a very, very long time. I think it sounds fascinating. It's about Ada, who's a Nigerian woman who's had quite a turbulent upbringing and um, seems to have these kind of fragmented selves. Um, she goes to America to go to college and after she is assaulted there, two of these selves um, take dominance over her own self and she's kind of left in the background of her mind while these two selves take over. Um, I think it's a look at mental illness. It could also be um, more along the lines of maybe some folklore or magical realism. I'm not quite sure but I'm really really intrigued by it and I'm glad that I finally got my hands on a copy. The next book is a bit of a booktube darling and that's Patsy by Nicole Dennis-Ben. This is the story, funnily enough, of Patsy who is a Jamaican woman and manages to get herself a visa to go to New York where her friend Cicely lives. Um, they've been exchanging letters I think for quite a long time and Cicely has been spinning the whole story of how you know like the the streets are paved with gold in New York and also there's the promise of rekindling their young love so Patsy leaves everything including her five-year-old daughter True to go and live in New York but it doesn't exactly turn out how she had planned she ends up working as a bathroom attendant and um, so we see her journey through that but we also see the life of True as she lives without her mother in Jamaica, how she tries to make sense and accept the decision that her mother has made but also how she tries to find who she is as a person as well. Um, I've heard so many good things about this. I didn't realise it was as big as it is, it is a bit of a chunker but um, I think this is probably going to live up to expectations. And then finally I picked up Sarah Collins is The Confessions of Franny Langton, um, which again I've had it on my TBR for a while but the front cover is what clinched it for me. It says, Wide Sargasso Sea meets Beloved meets Alias Grace and I have loved all three of those books so this is destined I think to be a five star. If not then that is false advertising. <laughs> but um, this is the story of Franny Langton who is a former slave now a servant and she's come from Jamaica to Georgian England, London I think, um, and she now stands accused of murdering her two employers. She claims she can't remember what happened but she has been found I think covered in their blood um, and in court she tells the story of her life and how she came from being a slave to being an accused murderess and it's a story of race and class and oppression and it exposes um, the perpetrators of crimes far beyond murder and kind of implicates the whole of English society in that. I think this is going to be a fascinating look at the treatment of black people in that time in history as well as being a bit of a courthouse drama which I quite enjoy as well so I'm really looking forward to this one. And then I went on a day trip with my mum and my kids to um, the Isle of Butte 
And when we were in the town Rossi, we found um, a really lovely bookshop called Print Point. And my mum bought me a book and she bought me The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. Again, I've heard a lot about this on Booktube and it's about a group of Oxford graduates who have remained friends. They're in their 30s now and they decide to spend New Year in a kind of remote Scottish lodge. They end up snowed in and one of them ends up dead. So it's a bit of a whodunit. I also, I'm sure I've heard someone say that you don't actually know who has died straight away. So it's also a who got it. Um, so it's kind of a locked room mystery and it turns out that there's kind of some old resentments and things within the group which implicate pretty much everyone I think so um, this sounds like it's going to be quite a fun read and then while I'm doing a haul I may as well throw everything in so um, the August pick for the Shelterbox book club which I talked about in my bookish goodies video this is a charity book group so your um, subscription for it is only £10 a month and um, that gets you your book but also makes a donation to the charity and they provide shelter boxes to um, people in need so it could be refugee camps, it could be people fleeing natural disasters, things like that. I will leave a link in the description box below because I think this is a great um, charity and also a really good book club because you get to read the book and then they just put up questions on their Facebook group there's no pressure but it's um, fun to answer the questions as well so this is the second month that I've been involved with them and the book for this is The Unlikely Adventures of the Shergill Sisters by Bally Cora Jawal um, I don't know if I would have picked this up I think I said this about their pick for July as well which was The Shell Collector by Anthony Durer um, which I ended up loving, so I'm, I'm putting my faith in this. Uh, this is the story of three British Punjabi sisters who, after their mother has died, find themselves having to go to India together as part of her kind of final request. Um, they aren't close and none of them are really looking forward to kind of a forced family holiday, but they all individually have their reasons for wanting to escape to India. Um, but as the journey goes on, secrets start to spill out and I think this is going to be quite a interesting read about family dynamics but also it's set in India and I absolutely love stories set in India. I was supposed to go to India this year with my brother but obviously the pandemic has kind of trashed those plans and um, so I'll need to just travel through fiction instead. Um, I'm a bit behind on starting this because I think the discussion is... Um, must be coming up in the next week um, and I haven't started it yet because I'm reading Great Expectations at the moment and although I'm loving it I'm just finding it a real slog to get through so it's totally thrown off my reading pace. But I'm hoping to finish that this weekend and hopefully get to this. And then finally I made a bit of a knee-jerk purchase after seeing this book mentioned on Lauren and the Books um, channel and it is the Squiggly Career by Helen Tupper and Sarah Ellis. So this looks at the fact that careers have changed, we don't typically have a job for life anymore and very few people are in careers that lend themselves to that linear trajectory up a ladder. Um, I myself, my career looks like more of a scribble than a squiggle and after six years in a national public health body I am just finishing up to start a new job. I'm taking one heck of a gamble. I'm leaving a very, very secure job for a temporary post um, in a different health board with a completely different project in the middle of a pandemic and economic crash. So it's highly likely that this time next year I will be unemployed. But I had to take the leap. It's a promotion and it's a new area of work. Um, I'm shitting myself. I mean, it could be the biggest mistake I've ever made, but I just, I really felt like I had to do it, especially with um, everything falling apart around me after I found out about my husband's cheating on me and now going through divorce. You know, I need the extra money, I need the less commuting time that this job involves, but more than that, I just 
needed something that was all me, something new I could sink my teeth into. My passion had kind of waned for the work that I was doing and I just needed something that was different and positive in my life. But it is only a 12 month post and so to maximise opportunities when that um, time runs out, I'm hoping to do a little bit of work on myself and my prospects and a book like this. It's got exercises in it, it talks about bringing strengths from different roles into what you want to do. So I think this would be a good way to kick off that work on myself. So, <laughs> that is my new book haul. I don't even know how many books that was, was it three, six, nine, 15 books um, bought over the last few months and um, yeah. I'm a very lucky girl and um, I also have a haul to share with you with the used books, secondhand books, charity shop purchases, whatever you want to call them um, as well. So I'll get around to doing that at some point in probably in September. Um, so join me for that one. If you're new, thanks for joining me. Um, I would love it if you subscribed and whether you're new or you've been with me for a while, I'd love to have a wee bookish chat. So drop me a comment below. Um, and until next time, 